In this video, we're talking about texture. I'm going to be trying to make the most out of some of the textures, the uh, patterns and the relief found in small objects uh, when we're taking macro photos. So I'm going to go and grab a few interesting items and I'll get started in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and welcome to another macro photography tutorial. Today we're taking a look at texture. Texture is a huge part of macro photography. Getting up close reveals a lot of surface relief and uh, bumps and, and interesting details that you want to maximize more often than not. So I'm going to be trying a few different techniques to get the most out of the texture on our macro subjects. I've got a few subjects here to try out. So I'm going to get them out and take a closer look at their surfaces. So first things first, what am I talking about when I mean texture on a subject? Well, I'm quite literally meaning uh, the texture, the feel and the look of the front surface of any particular subject. So uh, I'm looking for patterns and interesting shapes and we're going to be shooting straight down onto the top of a few objects just to capture that interesting texture and the patterns that are found within certain subjects. So I've got a crumpet here which is a really nice example of a very interesting texture. It's got all of these little uh, holes and indents, uh, a little bit of um, difference in the colour where these little um, burn marks are. Uh, I think that's going to make for a really nice subject. I've got some other things as well, including uh, some wood, some bark, which has textures on both sides that we can explore. I've got this, uh, this igneous rock, which has really nice textures on it as well. And I've got a couple of different uh, fabrics. This is a towel, which has a really uh, thick weave on it. Um, and it it's in lines as well, so I wonder if we can't uh, get some extra patterns and interesting photographs out of this. Putting all of this under your camera uh, means that you need to start thinking about texture in a little bit more detail than you would with a normal photograph, say a portrait or a landscape. You don't really need to think about the texture of objects. When you're getting up close with a macro lens, you absolutely do need to think about that texture. The way that I'm going to be shooting today is straight down. I've got my camera set up here on a tripod pointing directly downwards. This is really important because there's really only two ways to approach this. The two different methods for capturing textures are a stylistic choice. You can choose whether to uh, get everything in perfect focus uh, like I'm going to be doing today, or you can shoot at an angle, um, making the most out of your very shallow depth of field with a macro lens, you can get some very abstract and stylistic images um, shooting across these textures, picking out certain interesting features. Today, I've got my camera pointed straight downwards so that when I put a subject with a flat surface uh, directly underneath it, my plane of focus will be across that surface. That means that I can get everything in the frame in focus. I've also got um, my macro rail attached here. That means that if I have a particularly deep subject that's not perfectly flat, I can do a little bit of focus stacking by moving my camera up and down really easily. I'm going to uh, pop a couple of subjects underneath my camera and then we can talk a little bit about the lighting you're going to need in order to get the most out of your textures. To accentuate the texture on our subjects as much as possible, I'm going to be using an external light source. You can get texture shots using uh, ambient lights, the sun, and uh, maybe even built-in flash, but it's not ideal. You want full control over where your light is coming from, whether or not it's diffused, uh, which direction it's coming from, and which angle it's coming from. All of this is going to be really important for getting nice big shadows, accentuating the texture on the surface of our subject. I'm going to be doing this today using the Adapt Look Studio. I've got my control pod here sat on the mini tripod. I've got a few different lighting arms as well, and I've got some diffusers just to uh, show you the difference between diffused and undiffused light. 
I'm going to be using these lighting arms one at a time, simply because I think that a single point of light is usually better for showing off textures uh, because you don't want to be filling in those shadows. There is one exception to this, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. What I've got here is a little piece of wood, and what I want to do is use our lighting to make the most out of the texture that's already present on the wood. To do that, I'm going to start with a single white lighting arm. I'm just going to plug this in and point it down at our wood. As you can see there, we do have a little bit of texture on our wood. It looks really nice, but there's a lot that we can do to make the most out of that texture and really emphasize it on our image. Usually, when we're shooting macro, I would shoot using a diffuser. You can pop diffusers onto the end of lighting arms really easily, and they soften down shadows. They uh, really make for pleasing images uh, under normal circumstances. But today, when we're trying to get as much texture as possible, I don't want to be using any diffusion at all. I'm going to use a direct light source to cast long shadows and really harsh shadows. To get those long shadows, I'm going to be moving my lighting arm down to a really low angle across the surface of my wood. This requires a little bit of playing around, but you can see that that low angle creates those long shadows across uh, the wood where pieces stick up and where there's a little bit of relief in the surface. This adds a lot of drama, it adds a lot of visual interest, and it really emphasizes the texture of the wood. Using a single light source like that really makes those shadows stand out. I did talk about one exception to this rule, and that is if you can create contrast using a little bit of color. I do have a red lighting arm here as well, so if I plug that in, we can use that to fill a few of the shadows. I recommend using colors sparingly because what we're trying to do here is capture the texture of the subject itself. Using um, artificial means to add different colors, add different textures to your subject, uh, it can fool the eye, it can make for a striking image, but it's not really the texture of the subject itself. It's a stylistic choice again, uh, one that you'll have to make, decide what kind of picture you want to come out with, and experiment with your lighting, moving it to uh, the optimal position, and maybe introducing some extra colored light in the shadowy areas just for that little pop. I don't want to put you off using diffusion entirely. Like I said, it would usually be my recommendation to be using diffusers on almost all of your light sources, unless you really want those long, uh, contrasty shadows. Uh, take a look at these two pictures. One of them I've shot without a diffuser. This is a direct light source, um, and you can see those dark, long shadows. And on the other one, I've gone and put a level two diffuser on here. You can see that those shadows softened a little bit. Uh, I think it's a little bit more pleasing to the eye. However, it doesn't accentuate those textures in quite the same way. So it's down to you whether you want to be maximizing your textures or getting that soft look on the surface of your subject. I've just been taking a look at the surface of my crumpet here. This is a really fantastic macro subject. Uh, these things, I'm not sure whether you get them in the States or whether you call them something slightly different. It's a, it's a breakfast food and you can butter it up and warm it up and uh, uh, they're quite tasty, but these uh, little absorbent pockets on the front are great for holding all of that butter or your jam or whatever you might want to put on the top. Um, they also make for really fantastic uh, macro photography subjects. You can get really close in on this surface texture. Um, this is one that I've had to focus stack though. Um, it's slightly bent across the top so that we can't get that that perfectly flat plane of focus, um, and I wanted to get it nice and sharp down inside all of these little holes. So focus stacking is an option here if you want to get the maximum uh, sharpness on your uh, textures. I'm going to keep shooting a couple more of my items, see what I can do with different types of textures. 
I really enjoy exploring a single aspect of multiple subjects. Uh, taking a look at our texture in particular is really great practice for macro photography in general. Uh, we've seen how we can accentuate the contrast and the texture, uh, the relief on the surface of our subjects by getting a low angle with our lighting, uh, maybe using underfused light uh, to your advantage to elongate the shadows and maximize that contrast. It's something that uh, you guys can use to create lots of nice abstract images. Finding patterns and textures in everyday life um, can be a little bit challenging, but once you dial your eye into interesting uh, patterns that you might find around your house, uh, on your fabrics, on your clothes, uh, you can see that maybe even my jumper today would make for a really interesting shot with all of these patterns and the thick weave of the uh, of the material. My towel was very interesting as well with those lines of thick woven material um, almost looking like fields and crops. I added a little bit of green in there just to uh, see if we can make them look a little bit more uh, like a field at first glance. I'll leave it down to your guys imagination whether that was successful or not. Let me know down in the comments whether you uh, like to accentuate your textures um, using direct and low angled light or whether you prefer soft diffused light on your macro subjects. If you've enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like and remember to subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. For now though guys thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.